Good morning. Good morning. 28 days ago, I was arrested in Goma while demonstrating against the killing in Beni in the eastern part of DRC, my country. Over the last two years, the killing in Beni has caused thousands of victims, mostly killed by macheris, and has resulted to hundreds thousands of displaced people. During the demonstration, the police react very violently. They arrest 30 of us, including myself. They beat some of us, and they keep us for a whole day in a small cell at a city hall in Goma. During the 10 hours of detention, I feel freer than the people who arrested me. Together with my colleague, we start singing songs, telling the police that we love them, that we understand them, that our struggle was their struggle. And although the government was crushed us, we believe that our non-violent struggle was the right one, was the only way to achieve this, the, the, the change that we were seeking. The conflict in Beni is not an isolated event in the Congo tragedy that has lasted for the last two decades and maybe become one of the deadliest conflicts since the Second World War. In this conflict, in this tragedy, strong men replace strong men at the head of the state. Dictator come after dictator, all equally brittle. And the people are the only one paying the high price. Today, there are hundreds of armed groups active in eastern parts of DRC. Most of them thrive because of illegal exploitation of mineral resources, such as coltan, which is very critical for technology and smartphone. And since 1996, we are assisting in a, a sort of recycling of armed group. We start with Kabila, the father of the actual president, who recruits thousands of armed sol child soldiers and sees the power in Kinshasa before himself being faced, before himself faced, facing dozens of armed group leading by his former allies who finally end up in government after a national dialogue. From the ashes of this rebellion come another one with the same willing to, alleged willing to liberate the people from oppression and instead democracy. But with all this violence, the people are the only one paying the price. Poverty increased significantly. Thousand women and children was raped. Millions of people was obliged to leave their, their houses and go to refugee and displaced camp. And millions of people lost their lives. But even with this bloody conflict and bloody fight, the leader of these rebellions often end up in institutions. And now, and despite the fact that many of them are accused of serious human rights abuse. Now, all these hundreds of armed groups are used as leverage of power and influence in the region, despite the fact that, in theory, at least, we are engaged in a sort of democratic change since 2003. In 2012, Another rebellion were active and become threatening the city of Goma where I live. That was for me a point of non-return. And I decided to stand up and to start 
a fight, a non-violent fight, uh, struggle for, for, for change. I then joined a group that already existed, but which has no name, no structure, but at least was committed to non-violence. That group became Lucha and became one of the most important movements in the country. Although some of our campaigns at the beginning was around peace and security, of course, because there was that conflict in, in the region, our main focus was on basic social need, like access to water, access to electricity, infrastructure, and employment of young people. I remember during the, the, the first campaign, our colleague put banners everywhere in the city. They are now seeing unemployment rates, the unemployment rates of young people. Some of the, the, those banners end up in the hand of the intelligence forces, and they arrest some of our colleagues at the very first campaign. Many was wondering why these people, why these young people who live in the very violent region could pretend to become non-violent. Nobody understood us at that moment. People called us anarchists. Some was looking for who is manipulating these young people. In reality, we were driven by only one common vision, a new Congo, a Congo with peace, a Congo with justice, a Congo without corruption, a Congo truly democratic. In 2015, it became very clear for us that the President Kabila will not leave, was not willing to leave the power and was doing all he could to keep the power despite the fact that the Constitution doesn't allow him to stay. So what was seen as a democracy, a, a democracy turned very quickly into a dictatorship. We decided to oppose him and to protect our constitution. This was a big decision, and it has dire consequences. Many of us was arrested, many was kidnapped, and many spent weeks, months, and even years in jail. In 2015, I was myself, I was 25 years old when I was arrested in Kinshasa during a workshop on civic engagement. I was taken to the headquarters of the National Intelligence Service where they kept me for 50 days in communicado before sending me to a prison when in total I spent 18 months in jail. They accused me of many serious charges. They said I attempted to kill the president, I attempted to overthrow a constitutional regime, and the government led this huge campaign calling us a terrorist group. Many months after, thanks to the campaign of, uh, thanks to the pressure of many countries, NGOs, and my fellow activists from Congo and everywhere, we were finally freed. In 2016, the mandate of the President Kabila ended and he refused to leave the power. So we started organizing huge demonstrations calling him to leave. And the repression over escalated at that time. Many, many of us were arrested again and some were killed. Earlier this year, one of our colleagues, Rossi Mukendi, who was a 36 six years old activist and leader of the movement, Collective Demi says, was killed, was killed during a demonstration. Rossi was a young man, brilliant, a father, of, a father and a husband. When finally, 
few weeks ago, our colleagues brought him to cemetery. The government threw tear gases to the mourners and confiscate his coffin. This is where the RC is today. And to remind you, my country is called Democratic Republic of Congo. It could be a dictatorship or anything. But let me end with this optimistic word. DRC is a big country. DRC is as big as three quarters of Western Europe. It has the second largest forest, rainforest of the world. It's kind of the lung of the universe. It has an agricultural potential that could feed all the continent. It has energetical potential that could light all the Africa. It has brilliant people, creative people. DRC could become the most beautiful place to go. But for that to happen, it needs good governance, it needs justice, it needs to end corruption. But more than anything, DRC needs global solidarity. DRC needs you and me. DRC needs people like you and me to stand together and fight for the change in that country. DRC can only count, count on people like citizens like you and me. Because you know, this is not about statistics. When we talk about 100,000 of displaced people, not statistics. It's human beings. They deserve peace. They deserve dignity. And they can only count on people like you. Because we are the people because we support each other, because we are the people, and the people always win, and we won't stop until we are free. Thank you.